Good afternoon and welcome to Discover TV South Africa. Today I'm extremely excited to announce that the incredible Ashton Knight is joining us all the way from the States. Hi Ashton. Hello Kerri-Ann, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you so much. How are you? Barely awake but surviving, thank you. Thank you. I hope you've had some delicious coffee to give you a bit of a kick. And thanks again for waking up so early. <laughs> <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure. Anything for you. Thank you so much. You've been making magic again, as always. Um, we'll get to that and what you've been up to in just a bit. But lockdown, what a thing. Yes. Um, it's, it's a very sad, scary time we find ourselves in around the world and it's, it's pretty tricky to remain positive and to keep on creating but as an artist I guess that's one of the things that kind of keeps you sane and keeps you busy in this time. Absolutely and I think everybody obviously deals with these things differently. I mean on a lighter side we can make jokes about watching Mad Max reruns for fashion accessory ideas um, <laughs> but <laughs> On the serious side of things, obviously, people are, are dying, people are struggling, and uh, businesses are struggling. And yes, I think as artists, our job is to try and take all of this and kind of process it and synthesize it and comment. You know, even if the comment is just a message of hope or solidarity, I think it's, uh, it's the least we can do. And we certainly have the time to do it at the moment, so there's, there's no excuse. So, I think uh, from my side, um, my father passed away <coughs> rather unexpectedly at the beginning of this year and we went back to South Africa to help with all of that and um, got back just as the lockdown was kind of starting. So there was that added dimension of paranoia about actually, you know, being able to bring my mom home back to the States. and get out of you know leave the country that where we just sold everything for her and so on so it's been tumultuous to say the least and uh, since then I, I was able to complete work on the album and book that i'll be releasing um in july and uh as i said i have no excuse i have lots of time now because i don't get to leave the house unless it's too you know leopard crawl across the garden in my mask and that sort of thing so that's been my life for the last few months well i can't wait to talk about your book that is coming out and again there are no words to really say sorry for your huge loss i never met your dad but he messaged every couple of weeks into the radio show just sang your praises mm -hmm. and he was so proud of you and loved you so, so much and and your music. So Thank you, Gary. I wish I could have met him and I am sorry. Yeah, he was he was a big fan of yours too. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, thank you. Yeah, and how have you been dealing with the lockdown? Um, just keep on keeping on, really. Um, we've been lucky enough to stream some beautiful shows online to work with some great content. I've been fortunate enough to interview some incredible artists over the last few weeks for talk time. And I'm just very, very happy to have you join me today. It's always hard interviewing you because I know how the time difference affects you and you kind of have to wake up and it's still dark your side when you're on my radio show or um, it's today. Dark. It's being always dark on my side, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> it's always dark on your side with a yeah. splash of glitter. So. Yeah, just a, just a splash. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ashton, just before the lockdown, you were performing a couple of really special shows. Let's talk about your last couple of shows, if you will, well, before the lockdown. There were 36 of them and uh, mm -hmm. 36 different cities across Europe. I, yep. I toured with Wayne Hussey. Um, the third time Wayne and I have sort of shared a stage, so that was lovely. And uh, mm -hmm. this was an acoustic tour. So I would go on and do a range of solo and awakening songs and he'd go on and do a range of solo and mission songs. 
and um, it was wonderful, absolutely magical and absolutely exhausting as well. <laughs> And uh, I think I got back from that and <clears throat> slept for two weeks and then started writing this new album. So, yeah, I think the, uh, the, the tour itself was probably, a, it gave me the confidence to, to create an album that's, that's more just about my voice and the words in a sort of more stripped down, acoustic oriented setting. And uh, so I've kind of tested out that theory with, with the tour and... Now, now I've made the record. Thank, Thank you so, so much for chatting about that turn. And we'll talk more about your relationship with Wayne and the magic that you've made with him over the years, really, because that was the first time you turned and worked with Wayne Hussey from the mission. But let's check out one of your songs from the tour. This one is called Amethyst. Look away, oh my precious one, the weight of heart was fed to those you fear, and turn away, oh my only one, trapped inside my head. You seem to be Is your life worth living Without your body against mine Is the air worth breathing Without your tiny hand in mine Is your life worth fighting for Without your arms around mine Who oh, is this amethyst? Or is this the way of bliss? Taking us back to your tour with Wayne Hussey from the mission. Let's go to the comments. Let's see who's joining us this afternoon. Big shout out to Sandra. Another shout out to Haley. Hello. Van Berg and Darren Gorham. Uh, Ashton, a question for you. Darren saying, hey, whatever happened to Kathy Stone? played on one of your CDs, used to work with her in the 90s? Um, I believe she moved to the US many, many years ago. I honestly don't know. I've not bumped into her here, so yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't. <laughs> okay. Um, Janine Stein is saying, waiting for the voice. 
Uh, We're all waiting for the voice call. Chat more about that in the show. But that's to Jane Warner Critchell. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Shout outs to Ian Parker. Who, says, who wants to be saying We're all mad here. Mm -hmm. And um, Andrew giving us another shout out. Bonjour, all the way from Paris. Thank you so much. Hello, Sandra. Oh, Thank you for joining. <clears throat> Mateus Alexander saying hello. Hi, Mateus. Gian sending her love to you. Thank you so much for that. And Isabel the Big saying watching, sending lots of love to your mom. Ah, thank you, Isabel. And Bianca from Germany sending shout outs to you. And Andre Creel from the Birds watching as well. Lovely, thank you. We have Francois Bonk from Versailles listening in as well. And Mylene, hi. So many great messages coming in. And another from Andre saying, remembering your last show at the Nile Crocodile Victoria, Ashton. Wow. Yeah, I'm glad he remembers the Nile Crocodile. I mean, that was a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very long time ago. If you'd like to send your love or a message or question in to Ashton, please do so on our platform. So we chatted about what we did just before lockdown. But let's start at the beginning. You were born to an English Afrikaans family in South Africa. You went through school. And then, of course, it was time to choose between the army or varsity. Yeah, I chose varsity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that wasn't a very difficult decision. Yeah, and no, I thought about it for 15 or 16 seconds and then I chose. Yeah, I, I, I have massive respect for people who join the military. I just don't think I would do all that well there. I remember we had uh, our version of the army at school was called cadets. Am I speaking loudly enough? No, you couldn't hear me so well earlier on. Am I, am I, is my, can you hear me this time? I yeah. can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yeah, we had cadets at school. So every Monday we'd have to go and get dressed up like little army men and stand in the sun and march and do all of that. And uh, wasn't really massively entertaining. And uh, I do remember that it once revealed a, a, a sort of minor misdemeanor because I've as admittedly been a huge Bowie fan for most of my life. And I had in, in celebration of the Ziggy Stardust album and a party I'd been to, I dyed my hair red. And I think I was getting away with it until cadets because when you stand out there in the sun, I think my hair was literally glowing. And so that's my association with all of that. And so it made it made moving, a, you know, the choice between military or education quite easy for me. And you studied architecture while you were at Barbati? Yes, yes, I did. It, gave, it then... gave me a, it gave me a really neat handwriting and, it, and my first job paid for my first album. And that's about all I have to say about architecture. <laughs> well, well, I thank architecture because <clears throat> Uh, if it gave you the platform to create your first album and to bring it out to us, then hooray for architecture and varsity and hooray for neat handwriting as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, I think, uh, again, I have huge respect for architects and uh, the ability to work and work and work and work. And I think um, I inherited some of that, certainly from from studying um, architecture and uh, at Technicon, not at, not at Wits University, at Wits Tech. So Viva, I don't know if, if Wits Tech is still around, but if, if, if it is, thank you. Um, so yes, that's, that's really my, my, my story of my studious life. Okay, so let's leave us here in architecture behind. You did release that first album, which it paid for, and it didn't take very long for you to be noticed because you are known really in the start of your career for your rendition of the sound of silence which 
is such a phenomenal rendition and I and I was reading the comments to our post on Discover TV and so many people still believing that that is by far the best rendition of that song they've ever heard and some saying better than the original in their opinion so um yeah those early days and and we're really right from the beginning you created such magic even when paying tribute to or making a rendition of another song thank you yes that um that was that was i think i've mentioned before that was added at the last minute um that version of the sound of silence and uh ended up being a relatively good idea because people seem to respond well and have adopted that as i guess part of the soundtrack of their lives which is always wonderful even if, even if i didn't write it myself so thank you um someone commented yesterday saying that that was literally the song of the 90s for them so i think so many people really enjoying that rendition and of course your full first album but you brought out i think over 250 songs yes yes Today. yes i have um, a problem with sleeping so i, I write a lot of music <laughs> Well, thank, thank goodness, goodness we were insomnia, insomnia too then. <laughs> I'm a massive struggler when it comes to insomnia and to sleeping, but you've always been so good at communicating with your fans and putting out newsletters and reinventing yourself really. So maybe let's talk a little bit about that because you, you started off with Risen and Sound of Silence rendition and people have labeled or put your music into so many different boxes. And I say that I don't mean it in a negative way, um, but they do, or they've tended to put your music into into various genres, from industrial to gothic to uh, dark future rock, alternative. So I guess like one of your favorite, if not your favorite artist of all time, David Bowie, um, just reinventing and creating different sounds and and walking so many different paths in your musical career and and with your theatrics so let's talk a bit about those genres and you just reinventing yourself over and over, over again. again okay that's a that's a lot for me to answer okay um thank you yes uh are you drinking wine was that wine i just no. <laughs> oh because i'm stuck with you know the, the third cup of the day and anyway it is, it is just after eight in the morning here, yeah? so. <clears throat> um, yes, yes to all of those things. I like experimenting uh, with various art forms and shapes and, and colors and shades of eyeshadow and uh, all of that. So it's just honestly just been, I've had the luxury to, to pursue what I've wanted to pursue. And I think I feel very, very blessed and very fortunate to be one of the few who gets to do that. And that's how it's always been for me. I, I, I sang, you know, when I started with singing Sound of Silence the way I sang it, because that's just what I wanted to do. And that's how I heard the song at the time. And that's been kind of the theme for each album I've made. It's just, I try to do what excites me and write songs that reflect where I'm at in my life and what I'm enjoying about life or not to enjoy about life and thankfully other people have, uh, have you know supported that and um, made that part of their lives so it's, it's not really a conscious let's see how many hats we can try on kind of mindset it's just as trite as it may sound I literally just follow where the passion takes me and uh, Sometimes it's confused fans and certainly journalists. Um, and sometimes it hasn't. And sometimes it confuses me too. So I think that's part of the magic of it all. And that's, I think art is supposed to do that, you know. So yes, I think that kind of answers your question. It does. Thank you so much. I know that you, or I asked you rather to perform a song from your home so very early in the morning. Um, would you mind doing one of those for us now, if that's okay? Fortunately, I have a guitar right next to me. <clears throat> <laughs> so this is off 
the most recent Awakening album. The album is called Chasm. And this, we were talking about the tour with, with Wayne, where we went all over the world. And uh, this was quite a popular song. I get it. We just put the video out at the time. So it's called Back to Wonderland. <clears throat> Take me, take me by surprise. Life may shake me, so choose a new disguise. Hear them calling, selling dreams and lies to the people, waiting for the light. Here we go. Wonder, wonder, wonderland Stolen moments Beneath the battle cries Doors won't open To the smaller lies Hear them calling They selling dreams and lies All is broken Here we go Back into Wonderland We know The chorus of the dam will go Back into Wonderland Back to Wonder, Wonder, Wonder Thank you. Thank you. Really, really <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that. If we're lucky enough, and Ashton may just play another song for us later on in the interview. If you have any questions or if you want to send any love to us, drop the questions and love to us right here. Ashton, I'm going to be reading a couple of messages coming in for you. Got a message in from Ian Parker commenting that it was a great, great tour. And a big black heart from Janine. Thank you so much for that. Sandra saying, absolute great tour with Mr. Hussey. And Bianca saying, I love this song so much. Um, we also have some incredible artists that are joining and watching the stream. Mr. Robert McLennan from No Friends of Harry. A big shout out to you. And a shout out to Sito from Bonneboom 
to ask me to remind me to send you, so I'm glad you remembered to talk to that. A big shout out to Wandila as well. And another shout out to Mauricia, who says, yes, and what a tour it was. Thank you for visiting our continent. And just in time, if I may say so, a lot of people discovered your music in this acoustic version. For me, it was the other way around. I only had my first encounter with your work in this acoustic arrangement and only the original versions how fantastic to join this group of fans i mean look at this rendition of amethyst it is fire thank you so much for that mauricia ems joining two big shout outs to ems and to matthew this afternoon and a big shout out to as well saying hello from sunny south africa come and visit soon verli saying such a poignant song and sito saying how's your mama settling in thank you to all those people and hello to yes good afternoon on that side good morning and good evening depending on where you are and uh mom's doing just fine and dandy thank you sita um and uh matthew complained that you should never go to a funeral with sita because he will out sing you on all the hymns so i think uh Matthew's watching and he will remember that and see to well done. You were the the brightest voice in the choir that day. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about let's take a trip back in time rather to South Africa in the nineties. Um we got a message in from Andre from the Black Hat Bones earlier on talking about a gig he watched you at at the Nile Crocodile. Gosh, those days were around 20 years ago. And um, I have such a funny memory. I think it must have been around 1997 or so. Um, I think The Awakening played at The Fridge in Sunnyside. I think that's what it was called. And my, my boyfriend, boyfriend at the time took me because he knew that I loved The Awakening. So took me there for Valentine's Day. Um, and that was 22, 23 years ago now. Wow. Wow. Well, you haven't, aged, <laughs> you haven't aged at all, Carrie Ann. So well done. <laughs> Whatever it is you're doing, it's working. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Sunnyside, Sunnyside and Hatfield in Pretoria, I think. I think I felt like I played there every other weekend of my life. You know, it was absolutely wonderful. We always seem to have a kind of a stronghold in Pretoria, even though we were, you know, based in Johannesburg, the Pretoria people really supported the awakening on mass and my solo career subsequently. And, uh, I mean, as did people all over the country, thankfully. Um, but I do remember it, it, it felt like kind of our hometown Pretoria and it honestly still does, you know, and, uh, yeah, those venues, the fridge, I think moved, <laughs> many many times it moved it moved more than i did in my youth and um hell who ran who ran the fridge was uh essentially the guy who signed the awakening to tick tick bang which was a, a little record label back in the day so that gave us our start so thank you to hell and the fridge and hell and i ended up working together in, inter in intervention arts for many years and I think he lives in Ireland now, if I'm not mistaken. And um, what else can I tell you about Sunnyside? I think you'd have to ask me. <laughs> I, I don't really know, but it's, it's yeah. As I said, many wonderful memories and and Tux FM were huge supporters of everything I was doing. Um, wonderful to have the support of of the, the student stations along with the. You know the other stations and of course you've been a wonderful supporter with mix mix fm and all the various things that you've been doing and um it's lovely to be on this show with you having i think performed on everything else that you've done over the last like we met officially five years ago when when the first time i toured with wayne hussey which was in 2015. i think that's when you and i met the first time and and uh this is this is not this is a different kind of face-to-face -face, right it's not quite as intimate as the 
the other ones uh, these other shows we've done but um i think um for for where we're at in the world right now it's wonderful to be able to share this way so thank you again for having me i know i'm not signing off or anything i'm just <laughs> speaking as my brain slowly wakes up from the caffeine and um yeah, maybe someone maybe someone remembers something from Hatfield or from Sunnyside that they'd like to share. I remember going to Hatfield on the way to a Slender Nudes gig, and um, we stopped at a restaurant where I guess they recognised me from an article I had done in a I think it was I can't remember the, maybe Outright magazine or something like that. I can't remember what the name was, but I remember getting a complimentary dinner from a very enthusiastic staff so you know it's it's again it's Pretoria nothing but happy fuzzy memories for me of those formative years of my youth because I was only eight years old you know when I started the awakening I was only eight so <laughs> yeah I'm sticking with that I just my voice dropped at a very young age it terrified the teachers and then I started singing <clears throat> Well, thank goodness for that. If you have any special memories from um, Ashton the Awakening or his solo shows around South Africa, drop those to us in the comments section. Um, but I'll never forget the Valentine's Day I spent watching Ashton Knight around 1996, 1997, somewhere around there. <laughs> um, but yes, we did meet around five years ago when you were in South Africa and gigging with Wayne Hussey from The Mission. We did that very special show at the Barnyard in Ravonia, I think. And then I think we shot with Balcony TV with Julian as well. Um, so that performance was, was beautiful. And the entire show really with Wayne Hussey too. So a big shout out to Julian as well as to the club and Adrian. Um, you were talking about being on your way to a Slender Nudes show. Um, in early 2000 and then a couple of years later your music really started to kind of surface around the world um in you in, in in the usa in around 2004 then 2007 and 2008 and then your music exploded in germany as well and it just seems you were destined to be on an international stage and living abroad so um let's talk about those times if if it's okay with you, um, the, the, the Slender Nudes time and um, and when you started touring the US. Yeah, Slender Nudes was, I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think in any artist's career, there are those kind of landmark albums or events and moments. You know, I, I remember we we're talking about The Fridge, the first time, the first big awakening show was at The Fridge in, uh, I don't know, February 96, I think. And that very first time I plugged into that many speakers and, you know, strum my guitar, that feeling, yeah, that was one of those moments. And uh, as was the first CD signing we did, <clears throat> so I'm not used to speaking at this high pitch, but I do, I know, I need to be loud. <clears throat> so the first CD signing we did in, again, in, in Hatfield was amazing because up until then you know i had no idea if anybody cared about you know what it is that i did really and uh so yeah i did three awakening albums a risen request and a feral menace and then in two what literally one each year with touring and all the rest to go with it and then in 2000 i put out the slender nudes which uh, was a, a very colorful event for for someone who was dwelling in the, the underworld that I was dwelling in and it enabled me to you know to start expressing different aspects of my personality and, and musical tastes and flavors and yes we did essentially get I, I guess a different type of exposure out of that and you know you got to speak to different you got to speak to people that wouldn't ordinarily you know interview the guy from the awakening and um <clears throat> I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that sort of parallel existence that, that I could have in in the art world, and uh, I think we had 
we headlined the second stage at Opie Corpy on in '97. I do. It, you said Rob's watching. I think Rob, they were, they were headlining, and we were the second, the, the guys before the headliners. So there's that. And then the following year, I think we either headlined or came close to it in '99 because I think it was us and then the New Girls. And then I remember that clearly. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I have vague recollections, but uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure it happened. You know, I've read about it. And uh, so then, following that, the the it, it was this complete shift to the Slender News, which we launched at uh, the Victory Theatre in where is that Orange Grove, somewhere around there, the Victory Theatre. Mm -hmm. um, and just just a different a different version of what I was doing, and and I was. I know we we're probably going to play that video a little later. Maybe we should play it after this if we're talking about this now. But yeah, it was it was a, a glamorous explosion. I think one of the things said from goth to glam butterfly was one of the the newspaper headlines. And it was also I remember the picture of, of me in my my gothic apparel next to Britney Spears. Baby, hit me as many times as you want, whatever the song was called. <clears throat> um <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> that's the context of my life. It's it's bizarre. It's um, I've forgotten what the question was, but I think it was something to do with with oh yeah, and internationally. I think same year two thousand, I released I think what I what I would consider my most focused Awakening album at the time, which is called the Fourth Seal of Zine, and that ultimately uh, fostered. A song called the dark romantics which brought the word of the awakening to the rest of the world it seemed uh, there's a label called cleopatra in the united states that, that is pretty much focused on the goth industrial world back then and they picked up the song and ran with it and uh, it's you know people all in all sort of corners of the earth started started hearing the things that i was doing in in my little home in Johannesburg, South Africa. So I think, you know, these days it's easy. You upload something and, you know, the whole world sees it. But back then it really felt phenomenal to know that there were people all over the earth kind of tapping into this thing that, that, that we were celebrating. And uh, yeah, did that answer the question? I think I, I kind of got It did. <laughs> Sorry, I know there's so many for you then. I'm throwing so much out at you while I've got you on the platform. So thank you so much for bearing with me and thank you for your patience. I'll be bouncing around a lot more. Thanks again if you have tuned in to the stream and thank you so much for your comments and your questions. We'll get to many more of them in just a bit, but I think we should play another one of your songs now. Which one would you prefer or are we going to go into dressing like you? Yeah, let's, let's do dressing like you. That, that's, that's what I was touring when we met and we have mentioned that. It was a, a warm, momentous day. <clears throat>
What a phenomenal song, definitely one of my favorites from this kind of satellite that normally runs on my radio show, for sure. Um, let's go to the messages. Sita saying, cadets was super cuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, got a big shout out from Natasha as well. And Sandra saying, the Heroes cover is a masterpiece. It absolutely is. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Um, Janine saying, absolutely agree. Two legends, Ashton and Bowie. Antonio saying, hello from Madrid. Madrid, one of my favorite cities in the whole world. Big shout outs to you, Antonio. Antonio saying, we need your music. And Grace saying, amazing talent, blessed to have seen you in London. And uh, Alta saying, sound of silence, Basilis, the soundtrack, Fun May Lieva. Very, very cool. Oh. Um, Mauricia is saying, I love the versatility. There are songs to run and hop around to and those to look at the clouds with. What a great message. Uh, Beverly Ann saying, Papa Fink, proud of you, pal. And Marlene saying, oh, yay, Ashton's going to play. Let's hope he plays another song for us in just a, back, uh, just a bit, rather. Ian saying, love, back to Wonderland. And another message in from Bianca saying, so beautiful, Mylene, loving the song. And the messages just keep on coming. Thank you so much to all of you for tuning in and streaming the interview. Um, Ian saying, from Detroit Plaza in Kempton, 1998, to Bus Palladium, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the power of music and it's it's such an international language that everyone understands and can relate to in some way or another and your music has touched so many people around the world and just by looking at all the love and the messages coming in from paris and madrid and south africa and london it's it's, it's absolutely beautiful another message in from judy ashton we love you for the quality person you are as well as for your talent and humor that from judy and john and Sandra saying, great poet of dark beauty. Ozzy messaging in saying, I remember seeing The Awakening in Cape Town probably in 1999. Those were the days. Um, and Ian saying, tick, tick, bang, also had Batere Necho, didn't they? Um, getting so many messages in. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Another one in from Ozzy saying, yes, man, it was a purple turtle, which has also closed down in the meantime. So many great venues have closed down over time. Um, and it's just sad, so, so sad to see. And, and I think after lockdown, it's going to be even worse. So that's why we're creating all these platforms to perform online, which is never going to be the same. But nevertheless, here we are and you're being watched around the world. So there we go. Um, Matthew Fink saying, is that Kate Bush, Hounds of Love, 12-inch version mm -hmm. on your on shelf there? <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, let me show you. Beautiful. Yeah. Read it and weep, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so let's go back to what we were chatting about earlier on the Slender Nudes. And of course, then your tours to the US came and then you got signed, um, I think, through Massacre in Germany in the mid 2000s. And then I want to touch on what happened just after the Valley release. Um, you did border crossings to millions and millions of people around the world. Please, can we touch on that if you don't mind? Absolutely. <clears throat> yes, yes, you're correct about all those bits and pieces of information. Um, the Valley was actually originally written in South Africa. It was, I was writing that uh, just before I moved. 
and it just felt like we didn't get to do a proper release for it because it kind of got lost in the cracks. So it's the first album I officially released once once I no, I'm lying. I'm lying. It's the first solo album I, I released officially here. We had done Tales of Absolution by the Awakening first. Then the Valley, and yes, we did we did quite an extensive campaign with the Valley. I I hired a band here in St. Louis as the as as my sort of backing band for the tour and um, we hit the road and we played everywhere literally from New York to New Orleans in a van <laughs> with you know four four guys in a van and yeah and um, we got to do all these interesting promotional activities we me sometimes just me and uh, yeah there's a show in in Washington DC called Border Crossings that literally you you literally playing live to 125 million people which is quite surreal so you just got to think about you know the radio presenter in front of you and sing as well as you can and hope for the best you know and that's uh, probably what I'm doing now carry on <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah that was a wonderful experience that album may not have been my biggest seller but i think again it, it introduced me to listeners that ordinarily wouldn't have tapped into what i was doing before that and um it's it's a, it's, it remains a special album for me so that's the one that has a song called jennifer on it and that was we made a video for that and had lots of fun and uh, yes, I think that was the question because I, I know I shouldn't talk too long. We don't have all day, do we? So I should uh, <laughs> try and be try and be a little more concise. Was that what, all you wanted to know? Was there something else? No, no, no. That's perfect. Um, I know that earlier on I'd asked you to play a song for us, and I was hoping you'd do another. Maybe we could do another song if that's okay with you. Yes. Yes, I, uh, seeing as though we're talking about, because I didn't know what I was going to sing, if anything, because I didn't know if I'd have a voice, because we have crazy allergies here in, in this wild part of the Midwest where I live. Um, anyway, there's a song I wrote way, way back in 1998, and I think next to Sound of Silence it became probably the most popular song at my shows in Pretoria and then around the country and I don't know I didn't actually play this on this tour that I did it's it's not as well known in the rest of the world but I think South Africans how does it go yeah I think South Africans seem to like this one and they used to shout it shout out you know in, impatiently to hear the song so I'm imagining that they're shouting out impatiently now and it's about a girl I 
not believe the deception in me As I left you in rags of grey I could not believe that I chose this bereavement When with you is all I can be I said, hey, Marie We belong together Hey, Marie We belong together and go on Hey, hey Marie We belong together Together, girl. Wow, that was beautiful. Definitely one of my favorites. So I'm hoping that everyone watching around the world starts requesting this one more when we're allowed to go out and gig in a real life time again. Imagine that. But that was beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, I think, uh, yeah, it's, 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 that was on an album called Request. So I think I was nine years old when I put that one out. Um, <laughs> yeah, as I said, I figured out that writing songs about girls worked quite well. So there have been a few more since that song, but um, I've shifted my focus. On the new work I'm doing, I'm, I've tried to write about entirely other things. So we'll see how that goes. Cool. Well, that was great. Thanks so much for all the messages and shout outs coming in. We'll get to those again in just a bit. So we were talking about um, the Valley and then, of course, you brought out Mudderland, a full on Afrikaans album. And then one of my favorite, favorite albums, Some Kind of Satellite, where you did uh, Balcony TV with me and you performed with Wayne Hussey. Um, great memories from that tour and for hanging out with um, Matthew Fink. Uh, you've done a lot of music, uh, a lot of work with just music. Let's talk about that tour, if you don't mind. And of course, your relationship with Wayne. And then we'll, we'll touch on just music and Matthew as well. I was going to say something completely inappropriate when you said touching on Matthew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Matthew and I have a long wonderful relationship and it is very touching um <laughs> yes i i met wayne <clears throat> on that tour that was in 2015 uh adrian skiro of asp and the club fame asked me to <clears throat> support wayne on those shows so i gladly did and uh i'd been a mission fan for many many years it was one of my my, also one of my, my, my team on my team playlist that's for sure I used to actually sing I used to do a version of butterfly in a wheel um, in my bedroom when I was imagining singing to other people outside of my bedroom and uh, so that was something of a adolescent dream realized to 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 work with Wayne and we've subsequently the awakening supported the mission in 2016 on a um, European tour that was about 17 shows and it managed to introduce myself to many wonderful people who've become fans and friends ever since and, and I got to see most of them again on the tour I just did with Wayne yet again so yeah there have been three tours where I've worked with with him and uh, as I said you know it's it's it, the mission was one of those bands that helped shape the, the, the first steps that I took as the awakening, definitely, and um, along with Sisters on the Sea and Bauhaus and a number of other bands. And, um, you know, it, it, it was a one of those coming full circle sort of moments, which is great. And, yeah, I have much respect for the man as, as, a, as a songwriter and as a human being. So it's been it's been a pleasure working with him. He is an absolute treat. He's just such a gem and I respect him and I love his music so much. The mission are fantastic. And it was great seeing him here a couple of years back and of course being on tour with you. Um, but my one of my favorite things was when he um, played his Liverpool Football Club kind of 
artwork in between <laughs> our lyric videos, which I thought was awesome. Um, I'm a huge Liverpool supporter, so that was very cool. Um, and um, having one or two drinks backstage, good time. So a big shout outs to Adrian. And of course, Matthew Fink. Um, I'm just going to throw him in and write in the middle of the conversation because he's just someone else I respect dearly. And he's someone that always backs such phenomenal amazing artists and and artists that aren't in any way um, mainstream really um, and and he, he's just such a great producer and and a great musician too so Matthew thank you so much for the hangs when Ashton was here five years ago and for everything that you do for music around the world and I know that you you two are very close and you do have a, a touching relationship <laughs> Absolutely, you know, um, you speak about Matthew backing the, the 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 less obvious horses, I suppose. You know, he Matthew, my very first away show as the Awakening, the very first time we left Johannesburg and travelled all the way down to Durban, was uh, thanks to Matthew inviting us. He used to DJ at a club called The Station back when we were all eight years old, and um, uh -huh. I remember. Yes, yes, and the station hosted The Awakening's first non Gauteng show. So we met then, and he he he, he sometimes pretends we, we both claim often claim to be a little younger than we actually are. But I played at the station, and I would have met Matthew in 1996. So I've known him for a few years, and yes. We have worked together and played together and it's you know he's one of my absolute dearest friends and and it's wonderful i like he's the, he's the he's my longest friend you know in, in terms of time spent together i've known matthew now for 20 something years so that's that's wonderful and he is a phenomenal producer and arranger and musician and just an inspiring person to be around so if you don't know him Get to know him somehow. I recommend it. <laughs> Five minutes of Matthew Fink appreciation. Awesome. Um, let's go to the messages if we can. Um, got a message in from Janine saying, love this song. And another from Jane saying, my fave and first song I heard of Ashton's Thank You Mix FM. Thank you so much, Jane. Um, and we've got a whole big conversation going on here. Um, I listened to Chasm for the first time this week from Ozzy. Bloody great album. Uh, did it get noticed like the albums did in the 90s, Ashton? Yeah, what can you say? There's, uh, it's, 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 it's easier to put things out and more difficult to be heard, I guess, these days. You know, there's just so much so many things vying for our attention at any, at any given moment. So um, as far as things not being as well, uh, I, I, as, as prominently received, I think that's just a sign of the times. But um, I do get to do things like this and I do get to, to reach people all over the world um, at literally the click of a button. So, you know, it's, there's always, hopefully a, a bright side to every tale and that's the that's the bright side to this story i think we many of us who <clears throat> who released music in the 90s certainly felt the financial pinch when streaming took over and uh we could no longer sell our music um but i think these things just morph and develop and it's just up to the artists to find ways to to present what they do in, in different ways you know and uh it's challenging, you know, I just ate all the food that I had put aside for my hamster because I was really hungry. Cause I'm, you know, <laughs> but um, other than that, you know, <laughs> life is fine. I mean, hamster food is, is it's better than you'd imagine. It's uh, with just, you know, a hint of salt. It's, it's, it's a delicious side dish um, and it goes well with my endless supply of espresso. I was telling somebody on Instagram they were commenting that 
an Americana would not be enough to get me through this this morning because it's like the middle of the night for me. But my, my Americanas are made with four shots of espresso and I do drink them out of this very dark gothic Audrey Hepburn mug, which, uh, <laughs> which I, again, I, I, if you don't know Audrey Hepburn, get to know her, she's wonderful. Um, yes, what were we saying? I'm not sure, but I'm very interested um, to try some seasoned hamster food, which sounds wonderful. And you're looking great for for a 34 year old. So well done to you. It must be all the hamster food and the espressos. And I absolutely agree. Audrey Hepburn is awesome. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure we sidetracked. We got asked a question by someone online. Um, but thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I think you just said that it's so much easier to release music but so much harder at the same time and I think you 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 answered it very very well so thank you for that um Charles saying Hoi for all, so Afrikaans, Ian, work as a <laughs> um, I think we've run out of time for that Charles but maybe we'll try and fit that in we'll see how Ashton feels I think he's pretty exhausted after chatting to me for over an hour um Carl's saying there's a lot of touching going on well, well, um, the wonderful Bill Buitis is watching and he says, incredible artist, um, another very special human that's been involved in the music industry in South Africa for such a long time and really backing some, some beautiful artists and, and you're just a beautiful human yourself, Bill, so thank you for everything that you do. Um, Matei is saying Ashton's Mudderland album is a great piece as well. Unfortunately, I can't understand Afrikaans. Well, thank you so much. That's a huge compliment, right? Absolutely. I was surprised on the, I sounded like Christopher Walken there. I was surprised. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it, I, I was surprised on this last tour to, to hear how many people were, you know, fans of Mudderland. Um, because obviously they couldn't understand a damn word on the album. Uh, it's, yeah, it is encouraging. I guess it's a testament to melody or something. Um, or just, I have heard, I mean, to, to, to many people, Germany and France and um, all over the place, we've played lots of places, that um, they've taken, taken to Mutterland. So I've had to go and excavate the last copies that I had, which when I was actually back in South Africa now, I found a box because after we have been out of them for a long time, I found a box of Mutterland CDs, which I will now share with the rest of the world. So thank you for that. That was, uh, you know, it was always going to be a, a, a different album for me to put out in, into the world. It, it really, again, there was no agenda. I just sat on my couch one day and I strummed my guitar and started singing in Afrikaans. And the song was, became a song called Alles for Yo, which means everything for you, for those who don't know. And uh, yeah, that just one thing led to another. And before I knew it, there were 12 of them and um, I put out an album and some people liked it and some people didn't. And that's the story of my life. <laughs> so uh, thank you to those who did and to those who didn't, it's okay. You know, you've got other things that you like maybe, so. Oh, well. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for that message in Charles. Um, got a message in from Marissa saying people in Poland like it too, um, which is fantastic. And again, I go back to the same fact where music is an international language. And if you don't understand the language, that really doesn't have too much to do with the music, really. I know that some people really take to a special lyric or a special song that that talks to them or talks to a moment in their lives but often you'll hear a piece of music and it'll make you feel something and you don't understand it at all so so i think it's great that people around the world are, are enjoying your afrikaans album i think that's fantastic um maybe we should play another one of your videos now um tell us a little bit about glam vamp baby <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew him well. Um, yeah, that was that was the slender news we were speaking about earlier on, and um, yeah, yeah. 
I'm doing this. I don't know. I, we probably mentioned that I'm I'm about to release a new album called Waiting for a Voice, and uh, there's a book that goes along with it of poetry and thoughts and lyrics and whatever else. And um, it struck me when I was writing little bits and pieces that this is indeed the 20 year anniversary of the Slender Nudes and the 20 year anniversary of the Fourth Seal of Zing, which has the Dark Romantics and Eve and a bunch of other important songs for me. So I think there's been a lot of, I think with the COVID pandemic, we're all feeling a tad more reflective than usual. I would imagine and um, so when you add that and you know losing my father and uh, the reality of these cycles uh, you know these 20 year anniversaries of things when I didn't think I'd still be alive let alone still making music it's it, it's it served me food for thought and um, it puts it just puts life in a different context you know and I find that all actually exciting. I used to be, you know, worried about getting older, but now I just, I just move further and further away from the camera when I do interviews, and I'm really <laughs> fine. So, yeah, it's uh, Glam Vamp was the character I kind of, you could say, created. It's really just a, an alter ego of sorts, I guess, which enabled me to be. Uh, the quintessential glam rock star that I always wanted to be, at least for a few moments. And um, I got to wear lots and lots of color. I mean, the, the clothing was made by a South African fashion designer. Her name was still is Sonia Nivot. And she did the, the wonderful ensemble that you're about to witness in this uh, music video, which was shot by Eben. Willoughby? Willoughby, is it, uh, was it Willoughby or did he pronounce it differently? I'm trying to remember now. Uh, anyway, you know him. He's, he's wonderful. And if you don't know Eben Willoughby, you should know Eben Willoughby. <laughs> Phenomenal. I've been so blessed to work with so many incredible, you know, artists in various mediums. And I think when he, he and I met, he, we first shot a video for The March, which was on The Awakening's third album. And then... He, when I was 1999, so it, when I put out the Slender Nudes, he was the natural choice for uh, for making music videos for for the Slender Nudes album. And this one, we just had a lot of fun. You know, we ran around and we had faux paparazzi chasing me in the rain. And uh, I think one of the photographers, one of the people taking photos on the back of a motorbike, that's Andre Liebenberg. He ended up playing. No, he he had played bass for me in the awakening before then, so it's all it's all very incestuous, you see. It's rock and roll, and um, somehow the glam vamp just enabled me. It was a great medium for this particular experiment, and I got to tour the Slender Nudes all over South Africa, and we did do a show at Opie Kopi and at a at the Pink Lurie Festival, and I did a. A theater version of it in 2001 the following year um, at the theater Hayse in once again in Pretoria and yeah so it's just one of those albums I think I also come back to um, musically it's very different to what I'm doing right now as you will be reminded as you put as you press play but I think it's fun a fun bit of escapism and um, without further ado let's let's see the glam vamp poncing around Let him see it our way 
Don't let the trouble begin I'll keep you safe and so far from the just super keen on getting out and seeing my friends and hitting a dance floor and just going to some live gigs it's driving me crazy anyway um what a great video what a great song another one of my favorites um let's see what's going down on the messages ernesto thank you so much for watching um thank you so much for your kindness um Another message in from Tez. Thank you so much. Jean, a big shout out to you. Thank you so much for watching. And Anne Swanepoel saying, I have Ashton's Murdered Land CD. Absolutely love it. And Nastasia saying, great show. Love the music and the mug. I love it too. I need a mug like that. Um, Janine saying, my best song, Glam Vamp Baby. And Billy saying, still have a video of Need for Air from the Slender Nudes album. That's so cool. Very cool, Billy. Um, and Chris Mort are watching as well. Um, Ashton, you've worked with so many phenomenal artists um, over the last couple of years. As we said, um, you've worked with some, some great essay talent, but um, you've also worked with Wayne Hussey and been on tour with him. And then with MGT, uh, Peter Murphy, um, the Mission, Gary Newman, and then Beauty and Chaos, um, members from The Cure, Cheap Trick, Ministry, and the list goes on. Tell us a bit about Beauty and Chaos, if you can. Absolutely. That's a, a project uh, founded and curated by a good friend of mine by the name of Michael Cirobolo. He's the president of Schecter Guitars, um, <clears throat> and it helps having friends who are presidents of guitars. All right. Thanks, Mike. Look, it's one of... At least two Schecter guitars you can see here in my studio this morning. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I had worked with uh, MGT, who you mentioned, who who had played guitar in the Mission and Peter Murphy and so many people. And uh, he asked me to, Mark asked me to sing on his album, which featured a range of different singers. And then we did an album together called Gemini Night. And Michael Cerevolo. I think heard one of the songs on the the first MGT album that I sang on and he was doing something similar where he, where he was 
composing the music and essentially getting <coughs> guest vocalists to to write the lyrics and sing them and uh, I was one of the first people he approached actually which is a nice thing to say and uh, he has kindly said that uh, well what happened is is uh, he sent me the music to what ultimately became the first single for that project a song called Storm and um, we got to, so we so you know, we we've become friends um, as we started working together, basically, and uh, have written four songs together since then. Three of them are on the first Beauty and Chaos album, which also features Simon Gallup from The Cure and, as you said, Robin Zander from Cheap Trick and El Jorgensen from Ministry and of course Wayne Hussey and a whole range of people and. It's one of those surreal moments again. I think I sing backing vocals on the on Robin Zander from Cheap Trick's song. I sing backing vocals uh, with uh, Michael Anthony from Van Halen. The two of us are doing backing vocals on that. So you know, it's it's just things I never thought I'd say. Um, I was you know that I would get to do. It's it's quite amazing. I mean, Ice T's on the album on the same album. You know, and we got to go and watch Ice T do show at in the Schechter tent at uh, NAM two years ago the first the uh, music festival in, in Anaheim and so it continues you know you just it's uh, one opportunity kind of leads to another you know and uh, I mentioned Bauhaus earlier on and of course the first the first show I did with the mission Peter Murphy was also on the bill so you know got to say hi to Peter Murphy who was also a significant influence uh, on me and uh, I think the first first time I saw Archive by Bauhaus sort of made me want to pursue the dark arts so to speak and uh, you know fast forward to, 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 to last year um, Kevin Haskins the drummer from Bauhaus remixed one of the songs that I sing on on Beauty and Chaos so it's all it all just kind of you know, it finds, it seems to, to, the web continues and it's, and it's quite wonderful how these things all work out. So again, I think my, my 19 year old self was doing cartwheels at the reality of, you know, what was going on and what continues to go on and Beauty and Chaos. So we did the first album, which is called Finding Beauty and Chaos. And I was very fortunate to write the single and then the title track and, uh, and a song called Bloodless and Fragile, which ended up getting used in a television show here called The Purge, which is one of those scary TV shows when people get killed, <coughs> which I don't know why they always end up with my voice in horror movies, but anyway, <laughs> I have no idea why. Um, what else was I going to tell you about that? Then, of course, there was a second Beauty and Chaos album called Beauty re which is all the remixes, and as I said, Kevin Haskins remixed one of the songs I'm on, uh, the legendary Tim Palmer, wonderful producer, did a remix of Storm as well, and so on and so on. And now there's a third Beauty and Chaos album which is coming out on the 22nd of May, and I'm honoured to be on that one too. And I wrote a song called The Outside with Michael, which is the, the opening track on the album. So yes, that has been a wonderful experience and uh, you just, you know, you continue to make friends with 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 these with these wonderful artists I mean the, the, the guys who make the video and the guys and girls who, who shoot the the photos and whatever you know it's it's just this whole unit this whole family and and, uh, and Michael calls it the beauty and chaos family because it is like that and it's it's essentially just wonderful people who, who I am friends with anyway so it's just added bonus to to be able to create things with them Awesome. awesome. So if you haven't watched The Purge, then do yourself a favor and check out the Beauty and Chaos albums. Um, but as we said earlier, you don't sleep a lot and you're always crazy busy. And whether it's putting out newsletters and keeping your fans up to date, 
um, or working on these collaborations to doing movie scores. You did uh, Don't Let Go a little while ago as well, um, which did really, really well. So you're always crazy busy, but waiting for a voice, the book and the album. Let's talk about that. We've touched on it once or twice throughout this interview, but I think there's so many people that can't wait the release you've been sending out teasers as art passes from your website but tell us more about this release coming out in the middle of the year which is just around the yeah it's um it'll be officially released on the 20th of july i believe yes 20th of july and i launched a like a pre-order campaign uh, a few weeks ago and as you said i've been sending out teasers and so on and the response has been incredible, uh, you know, both for the album and the book and the vinyl and the, the blow up doll and whatever else you can. Okay, no blow up doll, but anyway, um, <laughs> you know, people are wonderful. I have just really supportive, generous fans who keep, you know, I don't really have to eat the hamster food. I admit that was maybe a fabrication earlier on. I don't really eat hamster food. So, but you know, it's thanks to the fans that I don't. And um, the album, as I mentioned earlier on, is, is more acoustic focused. It's more literally about the words and the voice and, and less about a big catchy chorus or a uh, whether you can tap dance in the shower while singing along. Those are all options, you know? I mean, if, if you can tap dance to Leonard Cohen, then I guess you can tap dance to this too. Um, so it's, yeah, it's more introspective. It's more lyric driven. It has a, a sort of a dark cinematic quality, which is probably not that surprising uh, in all things considered, but I think it's, it's very much where I'm at right now. And it's quite exciting for me to put out music that I have literally just written. I think I've found so often because I write all the time, I, I feel like I'm always playing catch up. Like I'm always putting out things that were written three years ago or whatever. Um, and this album, it's entirely new, but for two or three songs that have been around for a while, which just haven't found a home yet, and now they have. And as part of it, I had recorded a version of David Bowie's Heroes. Um, <laughs> and the idea was literally just to give that to, to the, the people who've already pre-ordered the album kind of as a thank you. And then it became very clear to me that they expected it to actually be on the album as well. So um, I have relented and included that on the track listing of the album as well. So it's, I've been saying it's 11 original songs. Well, it's 11 original songs plus, of course, Heroes by David Bowie, which uh, was one of two songs played at my father's funeral. So there's that. And... Um, it's also an artist, David Bowie, of course, is, is an artist who has probably had the, lot, the biggest impact on me as, as an artist, a, a singer and as a human. Um, and I never really wanted to sing one of these songs just because it's kind of like messing with the gospel. I mean, I think Heroes is, if not his signature songs, one definitely one of his signature songs, and it's a flawless original. I mean, it's... It need never be re -sung. My version is really just an ode to Bowie and to, uh, to, to art and to hope, really, because I think it's a song of hope. And, uh, and yeah, um, many other things. I could wax lyrical about D David and, and all the rest. But yeah, the idea was not to improve it. It was really just to sort of pay homage to something that, that means a lot to me and means a lot to many people who also support what I do. So I think it's, it really just is a gift and uh, that's that. <laughs> I just I got goosebumps all over my body. It was, it was pretty insane the way you're talking about Bowie and his music and your rendition. Um, I feel the same way about him. He's just, he was and always will be one of my favorites, if not my favorite artist. And he is just, absolutely magic and unbelievable in every way and your song when when I heard it I got the same goosebumps because I know how much you love Bowie and and so the tribute was very very special the ode um to to Bowie when 
when you made heroes it's going to be playing on my radio show this weekend and the following weekend because it is a song of hope and it's a beautiful song and i think we need to spread love and spread beautiful music around as much as we can in these trying times so if you are in south africa or around the world tune in to either my radio show or go straight to ashtonight.com or theawakening.com and pre-order Waiting for a Voice. I can't wait to get mine, so I'll be ordering mine as soon as possible. Um, Ashton, it's almost time to say goodbye. So these next couple of questions are just absolutely um for fun before we wrap up thank you so much for all the great uh, messages coming in from Cito, from bill from uh, matthew thinks saying is that alan driving the car uh, talking about the music video <laughs> yes. yes it is <laughs> yeah. um natasha saying oh my word those boots um hilarious thank you so much for all the phenomenal messages that have come in during my chat to the wonderful ashton knight so the final questions are coming up next to wrap up the interview now um whether you eat hamster food or not is not the question but uh, what is your first meal going to be after lockdown you can choose any restaurant any meal any dish what is it I was going to say there's a lovely little vegetarian restaurant called Lulu's downtown St. Louis. It's just a small, just a little place where you can go and get, you know, the kinds of things you'd expect. And, but sadly they did not survive lockdown. And that is, that is something that is uh, an ongoing concern of course is, is, is will the small businesses survive? And sadly many of them, won't and have not but on a lighter note there's another restaurant we frequent which is called big sky so for those in st in the st louis area this is my plug for big sky and they do a mushroom gluten-free penne which is magnificent it doesn't just have mushrooms and penne it also has magical ingredients that gandalf himself cooks in the back so yeah, we'll be going for one of those in its natural habitat, being the restaurant itself. We have been supporting them with curbside carrier, as thrilling as that is, but there's nothing quite like sitting down and enjoying a glass of wine at your favorite restaurant, I think. So yes, that will that be sounds... that will be my meal of of celebration when the lockdown is over. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Um this is a pretty tricky one, but you on toured so many great bands and you played so many stages um, around South Africa in the nineties. And of course you, you do too now when you're coming, um, when you come here, sorry, I'm, I'm messing up my words, but if there were say two or three South African bands, you'd love to see again that you really miss watching live, who would they be? Ooh, um, well, off, off the bat, I've never seen Nakane live, and I am a huge fan of, of Nakane. I think he just goes by Nakane now. He was Nakane Torre. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, Matthew worked on his debut album and, and added and brought so much magic to that. And he's a hit in our house. You know, I, I uh, introduced him to uh, our youngest son. A few years ago who then started doing the nakane dance along to christopher so that's that's an artist i'd like to see live a south african artist because i've never seen him live um and you know this and the second band and i know he's watching but i'd like to go and watch a von Boom show and the reason is <laughs> von Boom were my favorite live band before I even started The Awakening. I think I was still, because Cita is much older than me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there was just, I think, I mean, I remember them being the eight-legged groove machine, and I remember them being the electric petal groove machine, and fun with petals and fun with legs. I don't know, many things. And then they became one of them, and it was just always a show. 
and uh, I think Sito is just he's uh, he's a friend, but he's also just he's he's such a rock star, and I, I enjoy rock stars. <laughs> I enjoy seeing a show and being engaged by what I'm seeing. I'm not really into these sort of. I'm not really going to pay massive amounts of money to watch sort of uh, you know the solitary shoegaze kind of approach. I prefer Iggy Pop crawling across the stage, breaking stuff. That's more my speed when it comes to rock shows. So yeah, those two. I think there I've covered a relatively broad section to to, to go from Makane to to Sito and Von and Blum rocking out, and I think that would be a nice that would be a good night out to see those two. I absolutely think Nakane is captivating. He is magic. And Matthew made even more magic with his album. And it's always great watching Sito um, and Vonnebum at a live show. There's nothing quite like it. It's 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 so energetic and, and so so much fun. And if you haven't checked out Sito's solo music, you should check out Blood Honey. It's beautiful in every way it's dark and mysterious and and just beautiful so check that out that's blood honey b l b d h v n n y but i'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it if you haven't heard it yet um ashton um janine thank you so much for watching alta thank you so much alta also saying one of them is great they absolutely are it's been wonderful chatting to you ashton thank you so much for spending your very early morning with me on Discover TV South Africa. Before you go, would you like to do a special shout out to everybody listening? Anything on your side? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I always say to people that I think in, in this day and age to have anybody pay attention to anything that anybody does is, a, you know, it's no small challenge. And I think, as I've said a number of times, I'm really blessed to have the support and the love from so many people in so many different parts of the world. So thank you. I certainly do not take it for granted. I can assure you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much Ashton. Ashton. Judy saying, waiting patiently for waiting for a voice. Your version of Heroes is wonderful. It absolutely is. I can't wait to play it over and over again on my radio show. Thank you all from around the world for tuning in and for sending messages in and all the love you've been sending in to Ashton. So Ashton, to you, thank you so much for the art classes, the newsletters, for the beautiful rendition and ode to Bowie through your version of Heroes. I can't wait for Waiting for a Voice too. It's been wonderful spending some time with you as always. And I'm wishing you and your family safety, good health, lots of love and happiness. And I look forward to chatting to you again soon. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kiri Ann. And yes, let's chat again soon. Have a, have a beautiful day. We are, we are wrapping it up with a video um, called About You on Discover TV. TV. Thanks, Thanks again to Ashton, Ashton and thank you for watching. Lots, Lots of love. Have, have a lovely good, good morning, morning, afternoon, or evening, evening wherever yeah, you are in the world. Take care.
Thank you.